Our guest uh, in this uh, segment uh, has a great head of hair, by the way, is the sheriff of Berkeley County, Rob Blair. Robert, good morning to you. Good morning. And with you, Brandy Sullivan as well. Brandy, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Uh, we just finished our segment with uh, the chief in the city of Martinsburg, Aaron Gibbons. So it's great to have you guys back to back. Rob, I appreciate you making time and coming in this morning. Yes, sir. After after hearing uh, that uh, conversation, I think you need to get on Hornby for his shrubs out front. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's a good point. If you wait long enough, there's this one weed that grows up in between the crack on the steps yeah. there. It'll get like four feet tall if you let it. Yeah, I don't think the landscaping around here is going to get big enough to hide anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's not taken care of. Uh, Rob, on a serious note, there have been, and I mentioned this to Chief Gibbons uh, as well, uh, more shootings than one would be comfortable with on a normal basis around the area. Uh, any connections that you can find or any particular reasons why we've seen more than our share of these in the last several months? Um, I think typically the, the summer months bring out stuff like that. It seems like domestics and, and stuff. Not that these were domestic related, but uh, I don't know that there's a connection. I, I I've listened to Chief Gibbons talk about maybe there's some ballistics match up with the with the one shooting we're working and, and they have. Um, I don't know that we have that back yet, but uh, I know our investigators are on top of that one and we, we look to make an arrest on, on the um, Green Frog uh, shooting. What um, happened at the Green Frog? Um, it was a disturbance. Um, uh, it was I'm like not, 2 in the morning, right? I'm not sure of the time, okay. but it was over the holiday weekend. Um, which our guys were slammed. They called a call, and then that came in. And on top of that, we had a um, vehicle pursuit um, that we weren't sure was connected or not. Um, so it was kind of chaotic. Uh, several agencies responded to it, and um, the one individual was shot numerous times. Um, forgive me, I don't know how many times he was shot, but he was transported to a local medical facility for treatment. And um, I don't know what his status is. I know he survived. But uh, we're following up all the leads on that, um, to try to get that cleared up. The situation at the garden, and the, and the chief had mentioned that earlier, and we've uh, subsequently learned that uh, the scenario there also involved a woman who was, I think you phrase it as standing, standing your ground. And subsequently, the art an article about this revealed that there was an eviction uh, with that person as well. Obviously, you don't have anything to do with the eviction, but can you give me an idea in regards to a person standing their ground? Is there a general framework of what I can and can't do? I think that's an individual decision on, on what you decide. I know in West Virginia, you can stand your ground if uh, you, feel, you know someone's attacking you. you don't, I don't think you're required to retreat. Is that correct, Matt? No, you don't have to retreat. Right. Um, but uh, I, you know, it, it's an individual. Um, I'm, I'm pro Second Amendment. Um, I think uh, individuals should be able to stand their ground if, some, if they're being uh, unlawfully attacked. I think that's what the Second Amendment's about. It's unfortunate she's going to be evicted for that. So. Matt, is there any law uh, information, anything legal you can enlighten well, us with? Well, I, I would just say for self defense, you, you have to have a fear of of imminent you know serious bodily injury or death like so if someone is coming at you with a wa throwing a water balloon at you right. you can't pull out a gun and 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 shoot them and that's with the stand with the new with the update on the stand the ground or the uh, castle doctrine not a lot of that has to do with civil liability as well this the self-defense standard in western is still the same is that you have to have a reasonable subjective fear of being you know Serious bot receiving serious bodily in imminent serious bodily injury or death. Once if somebody let's use the example of somebody tries to break into my house, the moment they begin to flee, I'm I'm not considered to be in a, 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 a under threat any longer. Correct? If they begin, well, to, if, look, I, if I shoot at someone who's fleeing, I, I don't. It, it's 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 really difficult to make those determinations and say yes in that case you'd be okay it because it you have to look at the totality of the circumstances and every time there's deadly force employed and was it subjective that the person who deployed it thought that they were that they were under the you know imminent harm was mm -hmm. or death and you know if a, i don't know i might think if you're run, if someone's running away and they're 50 yards away and you sh and you shoot them with your deer rifle that's probably not self-defense, but someone on the jury may think that it is. You, so, you know, you're taking it out of your own hands anytime you 
put a bullet down range. And I, I, I believe it's situation, like you said, you know, someone running from a shooting, could they be running towards someone else? If they're, you know, they're a violent offender. And uh, so, yeah, like he said, it's, it's, it's subjective. It's, Is it it's safe situation. to say that if there's an intruder in your house at two in the morning, <laughs> there's a presumption of intent to do harm? Right. I, they yeah. don't. Yes. I, and I know what I would do in that situation. Yes. So it's not. It's yeah. dark. They're, you, you know, they're in your home. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's, it's right. everything's. I'm not going to say yes. It's it, there's right. a presumption because that's a, a legal term that we don't throw around lightly that it's presumed <laughs> that you're. I mean, I don't know. But uh, you can paint any scenario. Sure. Right. To, to make Is it there, stronger. You, with these shootings that, that have been happening, the Green Frog and, and others, is there any indication that this is anything other than interpersonal disputes that, that get out of hand? We don't have gang activity, that sort of thing. It's we don't we don't have any indication it's any anything gang related at this point. I, at least I've not been told that. Of course, it's active investigation, so whatever comes out of the investigation in the end, we'll we'll have a clearer picture. But these things kind of you know take time to to put together. Uh, just like you were talking last segment about you know getting testing back ballistics back and whatnot so. sheriff is there a suspect uh, i believe yes sir okay you mentioned you were also in a pursuit not you personally but someone from your department was in a pursuit that night as well sheriff what's the pursuit policy for the sheriff's department um i don't have the the, the entire policy but uh if it's um if it's um um a, a pursuit that's happening then the supervisor makes the call and whether or not they continue based upon road conditions based upon uh what you're pursuing for um a lot of times in our area you can pursue out of state and it, it has to be a, a felony uh to pursue out of state uh and of course if you're going to go out of state you want to make sure that uh, you're going to receive cooperation from the other state if, if they're there to uh it, it's a little bit complicated for the eastern panhandle as opposed to being in the central part of the state right. you know um, and we're always concerned with with the safety of the the motoring public that's that's why we pursue a lot of people will will look at police and 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 okay if a person is driving reckless and we do nothing and they kill somebody um, or hit somebody and hurt them, then the police did nothing. They're at fault. Well, if the police actively engage in that pursuit, they hit somebody, kill somebody, hurt somebody, guess who's at fault again? It's the police. So, you know, we have to really look at these things, and that's why we depend on our first-line supervisors to make those calls. Um, if it's you know, a reckless driver going through a school zone and uh, you know, there's kids present and all, you're going to – you're going to look at that differently if you're an open highway, light traffic, and, and whatnot. And um, we have techniques we can stop pursuits with pit, pit maneuvers, uh, stop sticks, whatnot. So we try to employ everything we can to make it as safe as possible for the for the motoring public. If it is a pursuit that goes across state lines, whose job is it to get in touch with that next state's department? Uh, we recently uh, implemented a uh, policy with 911. Uh, in certain areas within the county, if we activate a pursuit, they're immediately to to call that 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 adjoining state and, and make them aware that we are headed that way. A lot of times, a pursuit will be headed towards Maryland, and a second later, they're flipped around. They're going towards Virginia. So uh, it, it's a it's kind of a again it's it's difficult. You know, we only have 26 miles on 81. Right. So. Uh, going at high speeds, it doesn't take long to get down the interstate. To, oh, I've, to I've seen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not with you guys either. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. He's hey. talking about you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> you Marylanders. You Mar yeah, that's what, that's what everybody around here says, you Marylanders. In the left lane with the blinker on. And then I, I, I go, uh, sometimes I'll go home uh, through Harper's Ferry, and as soon as I get on 340, inevitably there's someone coming from behind me about 100 miles an hour it's always a west virginia plate going, going down 340 in maryland and i'll go yeah that's that jason barrett telling me all the time about hey you west virginians you i mean you marylanders in west virginia uh, speaking of 81 uh sheriff how much pursuit uh not pursuit but how much enforcement are you folks doing at the sheriff's department on interstate 81 right now in between calls um we do it as much as we can uh we're down six positions right now and uh, I would like to get those positions filled to where we could have an actual unit that is primarily, not totally, uh, committed to 81, but uh, for the most part, um, traffic and interdiction and, and stuff like that. But uh, our guys do a magnificent job 
based upon the call volume that they have, and uh, they, they try to get to, to as many um, um, areas of the county. It's not only 81. You wouldn't believe the areas of the county. We get requests for our signs to put up uh, speeding all over the county. We try to accommodate everyone, and um, those signs help us gather information, and then they help us to slow down with, with the flashing um, uh, digital numbers mm -hmm. and that that tends to slow people down but and then we put patrols out when we see problems in those areas would you personally be comfortable pulling somebody over on interstate 81 it's not comfortable i've done it and uh it's you have to use yeah you know, very be very cautious uh because it's it's just a dangerous dangerous highway it's uh um people tend to go really fast on 81 and uh, we, we try to enforce it as much as we can, but um, it's, it's unfortunate that we don't have more people that we could put out there. And, of course, uh, I'll bring up the West Virginia State Police. They're, they're really short on manpower. Yeah. And um, so it's, you know. And, it's, you, it's, and I just add that there's a law that if there's someone pulled over, yes. that you have to, you know, get in the left lane. Uh, if, if not possible, then you're supposed to slow down to, what, 25 miles per hour? It's something – I don't know. 15, if this, I don't know. There's if this a. Speed. I'd hope not. Hope not on 81. They slow down there. <laughs> but <laughs> or maybe 15 miles under. There's under some under the speed limit. Yeah. Under the speed. There's some. There's some. I, yeah, that's I, not I, happening. I, by the way, I, I, forgive me. I, I would have looked it up, but I know right. that there is some requirement that you get for the safety of the police officer. Which is interesting. If if somebody is pulled over for the safety of the police officer, do you prefer that they pull to the left side so that the police officer is at the window? at the median side as opposed to at the window on the traffic side typically you yield to the yield to the right side you'll um but with 81 sometimes it, you wouldn't believe you, you stop somebody they'll they'll go to the left go to the right some some people stop in the middle of the road uh <laughs> it's just it's it's dangerous stopping sure. people on the interstate uh that's what people have to understand there too that, that creates another hazard um but um we do the best we can our, our guys and, and women, they do a really good job uh, enforcing the traffic laws in this area when they're between calls. So. You, you mentioned you were short at least six officers right now. Go ahead and do some recruiting, Rob. Yeah. Um, August 3rd is our test date, correct, Randy? Yes. The uh, applications will be due by the 18th of July. 18th of July. And um, we've, we've tried to do some social media um, we're, we're trying to, to get the word out. We're a great organization to, to work for. Uh, and uh, we just, uh, we're looking for quality people. Um, and we, last time we only got 14 applications and we hired two. 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 What's your starting pay, Sheriff? It's, uh, right now it's, the entry level is 52-466. And that's going into the academy. I think it jumps up to 54 Right after you graduate the academy, yes. Um, but with certified officers, it's sixty-two thousand six sixty-eight. Up to sixty-two. That seems like, why only two out of fourteen applicants? But 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 well, disqualifies people. Some people don't fill out the paperwork properly. Other people will show up and they're not prepared for the agility test that we have mm -hmm. um, and then they have to pass the written make it through the background check make it through the um, polygraph and the psych evals and it led us to two candidates yeah there's there's it's it's a lot of uh, process to go through to to be hired on so you have to go through all those and uh, you could you could nail you know every one of them except one and and, and not make it so when do they go to the academy, assuming that they've been hired? Um, whenever a, a vacancy is, is available. Uh, Fairmont used to run an academy for, uh, I think they did it about a year or two, two years. I think. And um, uh, now it's only the West Virginia State Police Academy. And um, we, if we hire someone, we submit them to the academy personnel and ask for a a date and uh, if we can get into a we, we have one down there now um, and uh, hopefully if we can hire some more first of the year we can get get that class through too and how long is training for a to become a certified deputy for, as far as the academy part 16 weeks 16 weeks hmm. yeah it's called the basic class and then we just have one graduate in uh, june mm -hmm. do they get to come home on the weekends yeah they come home on the weekends um, and then after that, they'll have their FTO time where they're on the job with someone. So 
nobody's just let go before they're ready. Sheriff Ron Blair, Brandy Sullivan with us from the Sheriff's Department. Mr. Gilstrap. Are we past the anti-cop rhetoric time? Is I it hope, kind of I past? hope so. It seems to have died down in the media. I don't know if um, on the street. I, th- I don't know if that just has to do with the, the election coming up, that they saw that it wasn't a positive for them, so mm-hmm. they're going to lay off for a while. Um, when I say they, I mean, you, we all see in the media who they are. But uh, I was over it when it happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could see what it, what it was doing to our country and what it was doing to our and, – and right now, it, it's fruits of what happened is, is our hiring process now. It, we used to get, you know, a lot of applications, uh, but now it's, it's few and far between. I mean, who wants to, who wants to do a job where they're, they're not appreciated? Well, that was kind of the source of the question because I, w- I would think that right. – um, you know, used to be, well, it used to be when I was running fire back in the 80s, you know, the, the lists of candidates on for cops and firefighters was huge. Yes. And, you know, you you hope to get on the list and then you waited for a year to come to the top of the list after you had already qualified. And now we're talking about getting 14 applicants. And yes. it, it just, it's I was impressed world. that there was 14. <laughs> that shocked me. We, last time it was 14 and, and I couple weeks ago a week or so ago we were at 14 again i know what this number 14 is but i was hoping for double that or you know more that we could get a, a good pool to, to to draw from but i know when i went through an 88 there was there was a lot of applications you had a lot of competition for the for the for jobs and it's just not like that anymore so. do you need a college degree to be on the sheriff's department no but Funny you should in- say that. Interesting. So we actually put together a program with Blue Ridge mm-hmm. that will help our officers get an associate's degree. Um, it takes into account all the cho- on-the-job training that they have to have to maintain their certification, and then it also adds in the academy and other things that they're doing. So it's just another thing that we're able to offer our officers. And Brandy put a lot of work into that to get that up and running. How long does it take to get through the entire college program, Brandy? Well, it's actually, it it really depends on the person. If they want to take all of the classes, they they can be through it in less than a year. How many classes are required to get a certificate? So you have to have five college classes. Everything else that is required is made up of your time as an officer so the the five classes are they all in relation to the job of a police officer no they're they're just general college classes so your your math and your english those kind of things all right gotcha. we're actually going to be teaching at the department so we're bringing in a teacher so that our guys can actually take it there okay um and and get there do you have to have a high school diploma or ged equivalent to have a job at the sheriff's department yes Yes. that is required yes Yes. and we already have one graduate from that program yes actually northcraft got his degree okay very good hey uh you were on the state troopers uh, and reached the top level in the area here uh rob has that helped in coordination with your work with the state troopers in the community? And, and I'm thinking about I-81 specifically, where both of you would be patrolling that road. Uh, we, we stay in contact, like I've talked with Chief Gibbons. We try to have uh, meetings, interagency meetings that we can coordinate things like that with. We've, we've done some roundups uh, with the state police, city, feds. Um, we, we we try. That was my goal coming in. Is I want to I want to work cooperative with agencies. I want to support all agencies. I want to be an advocate for the state police because I see how decimated they are in manpower. Yeah. Uh, with when they're short, that affects us. So if if they could, you know, I, I, the answer for the state police is be, beyond my reach. But I will always advocate for more manpower for the state police because it's going to help the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department in the end. And uh, you know. Is there above and beyond the general reasons for shortages of police officers? Is it true that at the state level, because of the cost of living in the mm-hmm. Eastern Panhandle, troopers do not want to be stationed here as opposed to other areas of the state where it's more affordable? That's that seems to be the um, primary reason. Um, I know, again, when I I grew up in Cabell County, and, and when I came out of the academy, I did not want to go to Jefferson County, it's the last place in the world I wanted to go, but. You know, I, it it worked out well for me. 
Um, I met your wife. <laughs> I, met, I yeah. met my wonderful wife. I have three <laughs> kids that grew up here, two grandchildren. So I always tell people, you know, just uh, uh, God may have different plans for you. Just uh, you just may not see it at the time. But this is a great place. The Eastern Panhandle is an awesome place. I wish uh, the legislature would look at a cost of living for the for the state police to help that out. Um, but I, I don't know how feasible that's going to be. And, and talking to the legislature legislators about that. Are you and your office involved <clears throat> as we see all this, the new construction, residential construction that's going on, thousands of yes. homes that are coming in? That's going to, at least there are going to be some fights in, in, those, in those houses. Is, is your office involved at all in the planning process as these are coming in? When we get to a certain number of homes, that will trigger another opening for the, the uh, sheriff's office? Not, not to my knowledge. I know we have a vision for growth in this agency. I know we have a... Uh, and speaking with the county commissioners and county administrator, we're going to have a, a northern satellite office soon uh, in the Spring Mills area. It's, it's, it's not only going to be sheriff's department, but it's going to be EMS fire. It'll be a, a emergency services complex, so to speak. But we'll have space there, which will be awesome because we're kind of crowded where we're at now. And, uh, you know, we're sitting at 67 allotted now. And uh, I would love to jump it to 75 this next next fiscal year uh, and then just get the growth up um, as, as, as we expand in population because we have to we're the second most populated county in the state of West Virginia probably soon to be soon to be number one Rob thanks so much for coming in today yeah Brandy you too thank you very much thank you for having us and in regards to that test coming up how do they get in touch with you Brandy about getting on the list oh actually they have to turn it into the Civil Service Commission at the county clerk's office okay very good thank you both thank, thank you. you very much